tests that are going to be in this chapter. The first test that we're going to go over that determines something about a series is called the divergence test. We're either going to be able to tell that the sequence diverges or we won't know stuff about it. So for our, our divergence test here, if the limits of the an, and the an is what we're adding up, if the limit of that an equals some number c, which is not zero, or if there's no limit, or if the limit of an doesn't exist, then that series diverges. All right, it diverges. It's not gonna tell us anything about if it converges or not. It's just gonna tell us it diverges or, or if it, or if we know nothing about it, or we don't know enough about it essentially. So, so this means if the limit as n approaches infinity of a n equals zero, then the divergence test does not apply, all right? So we can't use it if we find out that the limit is zero. Uh, otherwise, we should be able to, to get some information on it. So let's take a look at these. So for each of the following sequences, if the divergence test applies, either state that the limit as n approaches infinity of n does not exist or find the limit of n approaches infinity of n. If the divergence test does not apply, state y. So those are the two things that are going to tell us divergence. If we don't find either of those two things, we'll just put a DNA there. All right, so 138. So the limit as n approaches infinity, n over n plus 2. Well, we can use L'Hopital's rule on this. That equals limit as n approaches infinity. Deliver, der, derivative of the numerator is 1. Derivative of the denominator is 1, so that's just 1. So because we have the limit of a n equaling 1 and it doesn't equal 0, so since limit so this diverges. All right? State it in some way, shape, or form like that. Again, you are you want to also say using the divergence test, that's fine, but you need to at least tell me why. You can't just show the limit as one and then just say diverges. You have to explain why. Okay. So next one, limit as n approaches infinity of n over 5 n squared minus three. Well, what, what do we have? We have a bigger value. Uh, we've got a squared value of n in the denominator versus the numerator. We could run Lobital's like this if we want, but we, we know what happens from calculus one with this limit. This limit equals zero. So um, divergence test does not apply. All right, so number 140, let's take, you know, let's try another color here. So limit as n approaches infinity of our a n. Well, this is, this is less clear essentially here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to break this up and just put everything in the denominator. So this equals 1 over n times n over 1 over n times this whole square root. And we still need our limit here. So limit as n approaches infinity still needs to be there. Otherwise, we can't use equality. We're just looking at the a n part. All right, so that means we have limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over, well, we can feed this 1 over n into our radical there under the square root. So if we can do that, that means it's going to be 1 over n squared in there, and I can distribute amongst all of it. So we have 3n squared over n squared, which is just 3. Now I guess I'll write this. 
plus 2 n over n squared plus 1 over n squared. That equals limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over, well, we just have here 3 plus 2 over n plus 1 over n squared. Well, what happens when we have an n in the denominator and just constant in the numerator and n goes to infinity? That means these go to zero. So specifically, this one and this one each go to zero. So that equals 1 over root 3. Or root 3 over 3. Let's get a little bit more room here. Let's do it here. And that does not equal zero. Therefore, by the divergence test, uh, the sequence diverges, or the series diverges. Okay, I don't need this here. So that's kind of how to deal with the divergence test, and we'll do another test of the... Uh, the integral test comes next.